Acute injuries are those that are less than 12 weeks old and are still in its acute inflammatory response phase. Most acute injuries result in instant pain and or disability and in most cases the client will be able to recall the moment the injury occurred. Strains, sprains and fractures are all examples of an acute injury. Let's explore some of these in detail now. When bones break, there are some clear signs and symptoms. If you have ever broken anything in your body, or you've seen someone break something, then you'll be very familiar with this. There is localised pain, bleeding and swelling, and sometimes deformity or dislocation of the bone. Also, depending on where the fracture occurs, there may be some associated nerve damage, which results in numbness and weakness. Fractured vertebrae are a good example of this. The types of injuries that a joint is likely to experience is one where it has exceeded its normal range of motion, for example, a subluxation or a dislocation. Quite often, due to the way a joint is stabilised, its supporting structures, like its ligaments and cartilage, are also damaged. In extreme cases of joint injury, surrounding muscles, tendons, nerves and blood vessels may also be affected. A dislocation, which is quite a common shoulder injury, is when the articular surfaces of the bones completely disassociate or separate from one another. The patellofemoral joint and the interphalangeal joints, or your finger joints, are also prone to dislocation. Regardless of where the dislocation occurs, they always result in damage to the joint capsule and its ligaments. In order to treat the dislocation, it must be reduced. This means the joint must be put back together or the space reduced. Now unlike what you may have seen on the movies where people tug on an arm to put a joint back together, a joint should always be reduced by a professional. Since cartilage and ligaments take such a long time to repair and the fact that they never completely regain pre-injury stability, there is a risk of re-dislocating the joint. And in some circumstances, surgery is required to stabilise the joint again. As a trainer, you can positively affect the overall strength and stability of the joint by training the muscles that cross the joint and by prescribing specific proprioception exercises for the ligaments and the joint capsule. Because a joint is so highly innervated, or it has many nerve endings which provide feedback to the brain about its position, performing exercises that specifically train this will help with the overall rehabilitation and the stability of that joint. When a ligament tears, it is known as a sprain. And this is not to be confused with a strain, which makes reference to a muscle tear. A sprain can be classified into three grades, a grade one, a two, and a three. A grade one sprain is only mild and involves slight tearing, but does not result in any joint instability. A grade 2 sprain involves partial tearing and is characterised by bruising, moderate pain and swelling. A grade 3 sprain, the most severe of all, results in a complete tear or rupture of the ligament. This will always result in extensive bruising, swelling and loss of joint stability. In some extreme cases, surgery and extensive rehabilitation is required. Due to their poor blood supply, ligaments can take a long time to heal, but having adequate recovery and proper nutrition can aid this. As a trainer, you must never take your client into pain, and you can work within their pain-free ranges. It is always a good idea to conduct proprioceptive exercises during their warm-up, and again as a precursor to their conditioning exercises.